Hey, hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. I represent Storm Spirit players around the world, and inside the channel, you'll find guides on Storm, other heroes, middle lane mechanics, streams, and coaching sessions. Your support keeps the content flowing, and if you'd like to contribute, find out how down below. With all that said, let's go. Right from the very start, just by looking at the both teams' drafts, we can easily deduce which team by default should come out ahead in the early game. The most frequent factor is, of course, the mid lane matchup. Whichever hero comes out on top can begin pressuring other lanes and towers. And the secondary factor is usually decided by how the side lanes ended their early games. So by default, if I had to just guess how will the lanes look by minute 10, I can already tell that Huskar will be ahead, enemy Gyro will want to push, and our Sven will want to reside in jungle, farming his first big item. In other words, their draft is way better suited for early game aggression than ours. So, going into this matchup, I already have the mindset of what can I do to delay their early game advantage and bring us to mid game with minimal losses. My own objective in the middle lane is quite clear. Just gotta survive the best of my ability, do not feed Huskar too much, and protect the tower at all costs. Losing the tower opens up so many possibilities for the enemy team. Now the laning phase isn't quite important here. I mean, as a storm you will just keep getting hit, so bringing extra region is mandatory. And as long as you can reach level 6 at a reasonable rate, you should mostly be fine. Of course, being the aggressive player that I am, I frequently make poor judgment whether I can kill Huskar or not. This results in a couple of deaths, but then again, I will use these deaths to better illustrate how you can recover from a poor early game and still make impact later. No! <laughs> Double damage! From level 4 onwards, with the 3 points in each skill, Storm should just be focusing on the jungle farm, only coming back to the tower if the creeps are pushed. And of course, rune control is essential. If at any time I would decide to just approach the creep wave which isn't under my tower, I would just eat a lot of spear stacks. So, being safe is top priority. Notice how I prioritize mangoes and salves over null talismans. Since I know I won't be spending much time physically right flicking the creeps and instead will have to pop in and out with my overload charges and use remnants for jungling. In this case stats are quite useless and quick regen makes all the difference. Now at this point what I'm doing here isn't ideal. I'm just trying to poke Huskar low enough and maybe go for the kill which means I'm spending way too much time doing nothing in a very low chance I'll actually get a kill on Huskar. So what ends up happening is he just pokes me back, I end up achieving nothing, and a bit of time is wasted. Against Huskar, unless you get someone else to gank for you, might as well just ignore him completely. Denied! With Huskar feeding me his advantage, I now feel much more confident on how I can approach the lane. And right now, I have two options. I can aggressively zip in, take out the most important range creeps, zip out and try to collect the rest. This ensures I secure my experience, and while I do lose some health and mana in the process, it can be regained moments later with either items, shrines or runes. This is the most ideal approach if the enemy is capable of holding the creeps in place, as if you would approach normally, he would immediately switch to harassment mode and outright kill you. Now the second method is to simply wait out until your opponent finishes off the creeps and collect the rest unbothered. This is better because you're not losing as much health and mana, but this option is only viable if the opponent is willing to push. Either way, since killing Huskar solo is out of question at the moment, after whichever method I use to clear the creeps, I default back into jungle. Invincible. 
his ability. And there we go. Just one good rotation gets us a kill, and we can slightly delay enemies pushing efforts. As long as I keep Huskar in the middle, yes he is free farming, but so am I. The side lanes are breathing freely, and by definition, if Huskar isn't actively moving down towers, we are winning. By minute 10, middle lane is won by Huskar, top lane seems to be won by the enemy team as well, and looks like the bottom drew even. Regardless, Swan is now preferring jungle farm, and the bottom lane is left open. Now, while it isn't ideal for me personally, I have to make sure Huskar isn't getting free towers. So I'm gonna go there, slap him in the face a couple of times, and should I find him low enough, my team can attempt a kill. As sometimes happen, the kill backfires, I die, the tower gets taken down, and the reverse of what was supposed to happen happened. At this point, state of the match looks like this. The enemy feels very strong, especially with Huskar in the lead. They will want to group up and mow down towers. This is their current goal, and all we should do is counterplay their goals. So if they push in small groups, we are definitely strong enough to deflect those pushes. But if they go as 5, we can't do much in that scenario, so the play then is to just counter push somewhere else on the map. At this moment, only the bottom tower is lost, which wouldn't even have happened if I had a plus 1 there. And as you can see, we are pretty consistent in defending the other two towers. Radiant top tower be under attack. <laughs> but she's pushing out top, and Invoker is protecting middle with spells. This kind of makes the enemy unwilling to commit too much, so instead of leveraging their advantage, they seem to be farming jungle more than they should, which kind of changes the objectives around. If they are not actively pushing, they are giving us space to push ourselves. So what ends up happening is, as long as I see one or two heroes on the opposite side of the map, I can pretty much confidently take the more aggressive farm, push out farther than I normally would feel comfortable with, and in turn force responses from their defenders. Like here, I just saw Gyro in mid, and I just saw Huskar in top. Since they are the heroes that would bring the bulk of their team's damage, I feel pretty safe and confident to go extra aggressive on this tower. And if anyone comes, great, we just force the rotation, I can just retreat, and maybe we can even get a pick off. And this becomes our next strategy for the foreseeable future. As long as they are split, we will choose the weakest lanes and push there. How do we decide the weakest lanes? Simply by reading the map and taking notes of where either Gyro or Huskar showed up. Without those two heroes, Necro, Silencer and Rubik would never have enough damage to solo kill us, so any lane where those three heroes are showing is the weak lane. And in the weak lanes, we are creating space by either pickoffs or chipping at the tower. Dyer's top tower be under attack. As 
for items, as a storm, I usually build Kaya after the threats, but in this match, Yules is far superior. While it is a bit more costly, offers less efficiency through matter reduction and region, it is all leveraged by having the active, which not only forges silence, but will help disengage from Huskar. And just like that, the only threat as a storm I feel right now is negated by a single item. And if I don't feel threatened, I can be far more aggressive in shoving waves into the towers. However, this still doesn't mean we are strong enough to deflect bigger pushes, so as long as they group up by 4 or 5 people, I will not be joining those teamfights because with their ultimates combined it is almost a guarantee we will lose those fights. So I don't even bother, anytime they're grouping up, I will be in another lane pressuring their tower. So what ends up happening is that while they do take our tower down, they cannot press forward because some other lane is being threatened by storm which requires respawns which essentially breaks up their formation. Someone TPs to defend, they are no longer a unit and everyone defaults back to farming which is ideal when playing from behind. After Yules I could be getting BKB or Bloodstone. Now BKB is ideal if the enemy would be far more aggressive since we'd be looking at defending high ground soon enough. But with the correct place and the misplaced from the enemy, our team at this point of the game is quite farmed, so it is unlikely that the enemy will successfully breach the high ground anytime soon. So I decide against BKB and will further increase my split pushing capabilities with the Bloodstone. And it is this point of the game where we feel strong enough to go 5 vs 5. Neswen has finished his first few items, I still have Yules which helps me frontline, and just like that, we are now the offensive team. Instead of looking to shove waves out to force defensive rotations, now we shove waves out to split them up and either pick off the weaker groups or take down towers where we know that the enemy cores would be unable to reach in time. And by minute 25, while they had superior early game, we have made sure to play opposite of where their strong cores are, delaying their pushes and creating scenarios where they would want to split up instead of pushing as 5 men. By frontlining with my Yules, I have forced a lot of rotations and baited a lot of initiations, which also bought some time and space for my team. From here on now, our team is farmed enough to slowly take over the entire map and we begin the process of ending the game. And this is where I will leave you with the rest of the match. Thank you for watching, good luck.
Carnage. Middle barracks have fallen. Here I am. 